Thanks for joining me again as we dive back into another great classic film. This is a film that drew controversy at the time of its release, and a film that continues to be controversial. It's from a master director, beautifully shot in black and white, and featuring some great performances from both experienced and inexperienced actors. It is Lolita from 1962. Based on the 1955 novel of the same name by Vladimir Dabokov, the screenplay adaption was initially adapted by the author, um, who took six months to produce a 400 page script that diverged greatly from the novel. Only small parts of it were used by Kubrick, who extensively rewrote it with help from producer James B. Harris, with Nabokov still getting the screen credit and the Academy Award nomination. Nabokov later published his uh, script as Lolita, a screenplay. With Nabokov's consent, Kubrick changed the order in which events unfolded, moving the novel's ending to the start of the film to help maintain interest as he believed that the novel sagged in the, at the halfway mark. There are numerous other differences between the novel and the book. Some are inconsequential, some are made to compress the film's action and keep its running length manageable, some related to story pacing and the need to maintain tension, some are made to shape the narrative uh, Kubrick had in mind, and some are made to avoid too much adverse attention from the senses. Due to production code restrictions, the film toned down the most provocative aspects of the novel, often leaving much to the audience's imagination. The film downplayed Humbert's preoccupation with prepubescent girls, and young girls being his primary motivation for accepting the job of professor of French literature at Beardsley College. Humbert is portrayed as more likeable by depicting him as cultured and debonair, making him less cruel than he is in the novel, and omitting his two mental breakdowns, his unsuccessful relationships with women of his own age, and his lifelong complexes around young girls. Humbert is callous and cruel towards Lolita's mother Charlotte, both in the film and the book, but is somewhat kinder in the film, at the same time portraying Charlotte as unlikable. To work around the senses, Lolita's age was increased to 14, and a scene where Humbert gazes at Lolita's picture while in bed with Charlotte was changed so that she was fully dressed and he's wearing a robe. Kubrick was especially careful to downplay the, ero the erotic nature of the relationship with Lolita, hinting at it through visual cues such as Humbert painting Lolita's toes. To maintain, uh, still maintain some of the more salacious elements of the story, Kubrick employed double entendres and humorous references. While Humbert is waiting at the office uh, of the Lita's camp, which is named Camp Climax, he is holding, amongst other things, a stuffed beaver. It's also noteworthy that Lolita's friend is named Mona. Quilty's role in the film was greatly expanded because Kubrick thought that Quilty was a particularly strong character and wanted to strengthen the book's theme of Quilty as, a, as Humbert's doppelganger mirroring all of Humbert's worst qualities. The way that Quilty torments him also invites the audience to sympathise with Humbert. The first and the last word of the novel is Lolita, while the first and the last word of the screenplay is Quilty, highlighting the importance of the character. Among the inconsequential changes, Lolita's hair colour was changed from brunette in the novel to blonde in the film. Casting Humbert was a significant challenge. After Harrison Kubrick bought the film rights in 1958, Charles Boyer was suggested for the role. He initially accepted, but declined a few weeks later. Kubrick asked James Mason to play the part, but he initially declined due to a Broadway engagement. David Niven accepted, then withdrew, fearing that the sponsors of his TV show, Four Star Playhouse, would object. Noel Coward, Marlon Brando, Rex Harrison, and Peter Ustinov were considered, as was Errol Flint, but he died before the film was made. Cary Grant was offered the role, but angrily turned it down. Laurence Olivier turned it down also. Finally, James Mason withdrew from his play and accepted the part. Close to 800 girls auditioned for the part of Lolita. Kubrick initially wanted Joey Heatherton for the role, but her father said no. Jenny Maxwell, Christine Kaufman, and Tuesday World were offered the role, but turned it down. Hayley Mills turned down the role on the advice of her father. Jill Hayworth, who was under contract to Otto Preminger, was not available because Preminger said no. Bridget Bardot was considered for the role, however, Nabokov said no. The role was offered to Sandra D, but her mother resisted. Errol Flynn's fiancée, Beverly Ardland, uh, pulled out when Flynn died, having hoped to appear with him in the film. Kubrick cast Sue Lyon after seeing her on the, her on the Loretta Young show and noticed that she looked physically older than her 13 years. Although Nabokov thought at the time that Sue was the right choice, years later she said that the ideal Lolita would have been Catherine Demongay. Stanley Kubrick cast Peter Sellers as Quilty after seeing him in The Battle of the Sexes and hearing his comedy album The Best of Sellers. Kubrick enjoyed working with Sellers, also casting him in his next film, Dr. Strangelove. This was Kubrick's first film in which he exercised total control, which was largely a reaction to the studio interference he experienced making Spartacus. 
Kubrick was also known for his perfectionism and attention to detail, which led to him only producing one minute screen time per day of shooting. Playing Quilty allowed Sellers to adopt a variety of disguises throughout the film, including as an inquisitive policeman, a high school psychologist, a photographer backstage at Lolita's play, uh, and an anonymous phone caller conducting a survey. Sellers modelled the voice of Claire Quilty on Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick encouraged Sellers to improvise in front of the camera, and he shot most of Sellers' scenes with two or three cameras running at once. Sellers did most of his most inspired work on the first take, and this allowed uh, Kubrick to get all the angles needed without losing spontaneity. As good as Shelley Winters is as Charlotte Hayes, she was almost fired several times. She was reportedly very difficult, wanting to do everything her own way, which upset Kubrick greatly. A special screening was held for Nabokov a few days before the film's premiere, and despite seeing most of his screenplay had been changed, he was very happy with the finished picture, praising Kubrick and the cast. Lolita premiered in June of 1962 in New York, though Sue Lyon was excluded as she was too young to see the film. She was, however, allowed to attend the London premiere at the Columbia Theatre in September. On its release, the film performed well on word of mouth and needed little advertising, ending up as the 12th highest grossing film of 1962. Reviews were mixed. Bosley Crowther of the New York Times wrote that the film had a rare power, uh, but was often garbled and offbeat. Richard L. Coe of the Washington Post called it a peculiarly brilliant film, with a tone not of hatred, but of mocking true. Philip K. Shewer of the uh, Los Angeles Times declared that the film underlines the tragedy in human communication and communion between people who have their signals hopelessly crossed. The monthly film Bolton wrote that the primary themes of the film were obsession and incongruity, and since Kubrick was an intellectual director with little feeling for erotic tension, uh, one is more readily disposed to accept Kubrick's alternative approach as legitimate. The film was banned in Ireland. Uh, the Legion of Decency deemed it a sin to view Lolita, uh, but agreed to pass the film as long as children under 18 were barred from seeing it. The film has been reappraised by critics over time and is now seen in a more positive light. Uh, filmmaker David Lynch has said that the Lolita is his favourite Kubrick film. Vladimir Nabokov received an Academy Award nomination for Best Screenplay. Stanley Kubrick was nominated for a Golden Line at the Venice International Film Festival and for Outstanding Directorial Achievement by the Directors Guild of America. James Mason was nominated for the Best British Actor at the British Academy Film Awards. Golden Globe nominations went to James Mason, Shelley Winters, Peter Sellers, Stanley Kubrick and Sue Lyon, with only Lyon winning for Most Promising Female Newcomer. It is one of the 1,000 movies you must see before you die. When it was remade in 1997, the film was seen as being more faithful to Nabokov's story. However, it was not well received and bombed at the box office. This is, this is a far better film. So lots of great reasons to watch this film. It is one of Kubrick's best. It, uh, it has standard performances from all of the main cast. It looks great in black and white, and it is a great story, really well told. It's one of my favourites. So what I'd suggest you do is that you go to our website, find our virtual screenings page, find the link to this particular film. Please click on it and watch it. Um, as always, we'd love you to come back, share your thoughts, let us know what you think, and whether you'd recommend it for other people as well. And then we're back in the not too distant future for our next classic films review. Catch you next time.